There's a couple Navy SEALs on the G.I. Joe team, an elite class of warriors unparalleled in the world of combat. The Joes have Torpedo, Shipwreck, Wet Down, Harpoon, Link, Night Fox, Tracker, and a nasty piece of work named Wetsuit. Let's talk about them. But before we do, let me say thank you for watching the channel. Whether you've been with me for a while or it's your first time here. If you do enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe and share it with your friends so you guys don't miss the content I upload every week just like this. Let's jump right into the story. Brian Forrest, the man who would become known as Wetsuit, was born in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Although for Action Force, he hails from Toronto, Canada. From an early age, Brian knew he wanted to be in the Navy, and he enlisted right out of high school, immediately going to basic and then A school, and he applied for and was accepted to the Navy SEAL program. He was then sent to BUDS and graduated and was rated as a special warfare operator and qualified on all manner of NATO weaponry. Brian is a combat diver and having also graduated UDT, is an expert in underwater demolitions. He's also proficient in closed and open circuit diving and SDV insertion. In fact, the secondary MOS on his file card is listed as UDT, although later one indicates point man slash navigator. Brian is trained in halo and hey ho jumping from various fixed wing and rotary craft, CQB, VBSS, SEER, and direct action combat operations in all types of land warfare environments from the jungles, desert, to the snowy woodlands of the north. He's also proficient with a lot of the G.I. Joe vehicles as he also completed tactical mobility training. In other words, he's one mean SOB and an extremely well-rounded operator that his file cards really don't do justice. From there, Brian was accepted to the G.I. Joe team and Wetsuit was almost given the code name Soggy or Hammerhead and Gator was another one at the time too and I think these actually refer to his personality more than his waterborne expertise. As his V1 file card says, SEALs are the guys who are too nasty to be airborne rangers or marines. And Wetsuit may just as well be the roughest of the bunch. He's wild and unruly, but he's simply the best at what he does. Others continue to talk about his gruff demeanor. Wetsuit has been characterized as being 175 pounds of mean on the hoof and is definitely not known for his social graces. He is not the type who goes over well at the chaplain assistant social tea, but he's exactly the dude you want behind you when you run into a gaggle of cobra eels in a shallow minefield. Oh, and they continue. Here's another gem. The man is a walking attitude. Fortunately, he's not a walking attitude problem like Shipwreck, but Wetsuit is almost as hard to keep in line. The problem may lie in the fact that he loves his work just a little too much. His specialty is underwater demolitions, and he tends to use too heavy a hand when asked to blow up something. The last cobra base he took out a floating fortress got blasted into so many pieces that there wasn't enough left to sink. So Wetsuit's first mission with the Joes was in Larry Hama's A Real American Hero comic book series in 1989 with issue 47 where he debuted right alongside Beachhead on the cover of the comic book. Inside the issue, the team had pulled a fake ripcord off of Cobra Island but Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow were still stuck inland. So Hawk had them drop a couple devilfish fast attack boats out the back of a C-130 where they linked up with Cutter and Hawk on a whale just offshore. Hawk said that Wetsuit and Beachhead were the two most qualified for this particular mission. On the way to shore, they got in a firefight with Cobra Eels on hydrofoils and sea sleds. Wetsuit wasn't able to fire the torpedoes at the flat bottom sea sleds because the firing mechanisms were damaged when they came out the back of the C-130. So instead, he cranked the throttle and shot right between the two sea sleds, capsizing them in his wake. They managed to rescue Snake Eyes. Wetsuit then showed up in issue 53 during a Navy versus Marine competition of arm wrestling and chess. After Cobra Civil War, General Malthus had most of the Joes rounded up and in custody so he could blame the fiasco on Generals Hawk and Hollingsworth. Well, Wetsuit was quote-unquote missing at the time of the conflict, so he was able to evade capture along with a couple other Joes. He was then part of the rescue operation to get General Hawk out of St. Lowe's Infirmary where the general was being held and kept under armed guard. Zap said that Wetsuit was part of flank security along with Snowjob himself and Steeler while Bazooka, Barbecue, and Flash were drag and Roadblock, Rock and Roll, and Grunt were going to go right through the front doors. At the same time, Storm Shadow, Jinx, and Billy Kessler, our resident ninjas, would climb up the building and make entry from another level. He wasn't really in the main comic book series much after that, but he was still very much an active member. In fact, he made his next appearances in Special Missions and G.I. Joe Yearbook Issue 4. In that fourth issue of the yearbook, Wetsuit was off the coast of Cobra Island in the Gulf of Mexico with Shipwreck and Cutter when they spotted a Russian Victor-class hunter-killer submarine offloading the October Guard into a raft. Wetsuit and Torpedo popped out of the water, having sabotaged the October Guard's outboard motor propellers, and they were captured. 
They then follow the rest of the October Guard to shore, where we get to see our two operators in Navy SEAL land warfare gear instead of wetsuits. There was the scene where Wetsuit was watching the October Guard from the underbrush while Crocmaster was sneaking up on him, but Torpedo was sneaking up on Crocmaster at the same time, happened to knock him out with the butt of his rifle. And he goes, really, Wetsuit? Like, he, he should have seen him. Should have known he was there. They teamed up with the October Guard to escape, and the October Guard stole a Cobra Mamba while our two Joes took a Hydrofoil back out to sea. Ended up being that the Joes traded the two captured October Guard that Torpedo and Wetsuit were able to stop for the Cobra Mamba, which they would use in a later mission. I mean, they couldn't fit the Mamba on the Victor-class submarine. Wetsuit was also part of the G.I. Joe's special mission series, debuting there with issue one right on the cover. The team faked a sunken 688-class submarine rescue mission. The real mission was to rescue the harbor master of Kaliningrad, so Torpedo and Wetsuit were able to dive down and get the defector. They hooked him up to a harness for a stable rig extraction. Later, Wetsuit jumped out of a stealthy C-47 Dakota with Leatherneck, Footloose, Flint, Tunnel Rat, Beachhead, and Lowlight somewhere over Southeast Asia. A CIA spook named Anderson wanted them to capture or kill a spy and recover the computer chips he was holding. Wetsuit was Fireteam Alpha along with Flint for this. And they set up for an ambush, but the CIA screwed them over and they were exposed to an armored column. So Wetsuit actually fired a bunch of claymores right at them. And they barely made it out there there, but they did. And they made it with the chips. He doesn't show up again in the main series until many years later when Larry Hama picked it up again with IDW. He makes a really brief cameo in issue 184 where we see him working with some tablets in the pit. And this is presumably what he's been doing this whole time. Base duty. Working in the command center. And finally for the comic books, Wetsu does show up in issue 272. Looking ornery as ever. <laughs> he's one of the paratroops along with Ripcord, Freefall, LJ, Torpedo, and Tunnel Rat. So he's very much an active member of the team and a part of this current Snake Hunt series as we're into the end of summer 2020. Action Force Monthly was printed as G.I. Joe European Mission 4. And in a story called The Devil in the Deep Blue Sea, Wetsuit was on an Action Force whale escorting an oil tanker through the treacherous Straits of Hormuz. And in Action Force Monthly 14, he was off the coast of Northwest Africa with Falcon and Lifeline trying to recover a computer which had sensitive Ministry of Defense data on it. And that's it, save for some appearances and his status as an active reserve for Devil's Doe. Now, on to animate the wetsuit. In the Sunbow series, wetsuit was voiced by Jack Angel. And if that sounds familiar, Jack also voiced King Zarkon in the original Voltron series, as well as Astro Train, Ultra Magnus, and Ramjet for Transformers. And lately, he's been lending his voice to games like Final Fantasy XV, World of Warcraft, Battle for Azeroth, Call of Duty Black Ops, and Resident Evil Operation Raccoon City. But back on topic, <laughs> wetsuit was known for his snarky, sarcastic, and gruff attitude here as well. He was always going at it with his marine buddy, Leatherneck, keeping that Navy Marine rivalry alive. And due to the timing of his debut, Wetsuit first appeared in the second season of the show, where he was defending the tomb of famed Mongolian warlord Genghis Khan in Arise, Serpentor, Arise. He was fighting Cobra Commander in a trio of subs from the water base called the Battle Platform and Computer Complications. In Iceberg Goes South, Wetsuit was at the Arctic Environment Research Base testing equipment for the Navy SEALs, and he had an experimental dive suit that he got to test as well. In My Favorite Things, he was in his civvies in the Netherlands with the team, and he was on a falcon glider at Dracula's Castle, and as Serpentor sought out artifacts and his favorite things to level up his power. He was with his friend Jarhead, aka Leatherneck, who keeps calling him Froggy. He was kicking Cobra ass on a killer whale and raised the flag. Later in the episode, he was in a shark as part of the team to salvage an antimatter pod from the sunken aircraft carrier before Cobra could get it. For the episode called Ninja Holiday, he was, again, with Leatherneck, along with Sergeant Slaughter, Beachhead, and Sci-Fi. Later in that episode, he gets called Mr. Forrest as he gets a letter saying he's been selected to participate in a martial arts competition. Pierre Lafont makes Sergeant Slaughter fight Wetsuit, and he tells him that he has to kill a G.I. Joe. So the two fight with kendo sticks, and guess who he's with later, as they do a synchronized punch. Leatherneck. Again, paired with Leatherneck, he was nearly injured in the most dangerous thing in the world, and they started fighting with each other. In Joe's Night Out, Wetsuit was with guess who? That's right, Leatherneck. Froggy and Jarhead together again. Later, he went to a nightclub with a girl named Cindy along with, yep, Leatherneck and Dial Tone. And he actually wore his wetsuit to a nightclub. I mean, it's a look, I guess. He was also in the Deke series, like the episode Chunnel, where he was on a Cobra bulldozer called an Earthquake, and Keyboard Warriors, where we see him interrogating Overkill. And Wetsuit was also in G.I. Joe the movie toward the end, where he's in an ice dome, and then also in the Valor vs. Venom movie briefly, and now the action figures. 
The first wetsuit action figure came out in 1986, complete with his teal, black, white, and orange paint scheme. He had an orange sea sled and a scuba backpack, and of course, flippers. This figure was also featured in the Devil Fish television commercial. That same year, he also came in a Toys R Us exclusive five pack that included an audio tape. Yes, a tape. This was before CDs were a thing. He got a black and yellow paint job for the 1992 wave along with a hydro charge spear and a nautical sled jet. The file card for this figure references the Joe's Barracuda. Wetsuit is the head honcho in charge of piloting the G.I. Joe Barracuda, it says. The next year, he went to black and orange as he came in the Battle Corps line. In 98, Wetsuit was carded with shipwreck and torpedo for a Toys R Us exclusive set called the Navy Assault Unit. In 2001, Wetsuit was in a two-pack with Wet Down. 2002, Joe vs. Cobra found him in a two-pack with Cobra More. Now he's using Torpedo's spear gun. He got a sound attack figure in 2002, and this eight-pack was exclusive to a store called BJ's. The Depth Ray vehicle came with Wetsuit in 2003 as part of the Built to Rule line, and version 1011 were both released in 2009. One was the Assault on Cobra 7 figure set, and the other, a ROC figure exclusive to Target that came boxed with the Dragonfish. And finally, there was another figure released in 2011 that came with a 15 figure set called Mission Brazil. Two. To sum wetsuit up, we again turn to the foul guards. Even the most frightful sea creature run for cover when wetsuit hits the turf. He's wild and unruly, but he's simply the best at what he does. So there you have it, the story of G.I. Joe's wetsuit. For now, that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe, turn on your notifications so you can be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.